Hello everyone, and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we'll be taking a look at Steinmart. If you're not familiar with Steinmart, it's a discount department store chain with around 280 locations in the United States. They were founded in 1908, and after 112 years in operation, they have filed for bankruptcy. Their bankruptcy filing was on August 12th, 2020, and shortly after that, they announced they planned to close all of their stores and wind down operations. Steinmart was founded by a Russian Jewish immigrant by the name of Sam Stein, and he opened the first store in Greensville, Mississippi in 1908. When Steinmart was originally founded, it was more of a general store, but that changed in 1932 when Sam Stein passed away and his son Jake Stein took over. At that point, the chain turned away from being a general store and focused more on discount clothing. You'll notice as we go through these locations that probably 75% of the merchandise in the store is clothing and apparel. Besides clothing, Steinmart also sells home decor, some small kitchen appliances, and other things that you would expect to find in a department store. They're just a little bit smaller than, you know, a Sears or a JCPenney, so there's not as much of a selection. For example, here's one of the decor sections. You can see it's just a small little wall there with some artwork and mirrors. The customer base that they try and target are people who regularly shop at department stores. And the way they try and get them into Steinmart is by offering department store goods at discount prices. Unfortunately, department stores have really been struggling lately because of things like Amazon. That's why I was really surprised to see an Amazon locker in Steinmart. I've never seen one inside a store before. I noticed they placed it all the way in the back of the store, so you have to walk all the way through in order to get to it. So it looks like they did that to try and attract customers into the store, but unfortunately that doesn't seem to have worked. I had never gone into a Steinmart store until a few years ago, but I have to tell you walking through one back then and again now, I get really strong Mervyn's vibes. That's a store that I'm familiar with from my childhood and it just very much feels like a Mervyn's in here between the white tile, the dark carpeting and just apparel and clothing everywhere and kind of bland decor. It just kind of feels like you're walking around a time portal that leads into like a 1990s, early 2000s department store. I think Steinmart's financial problems really became apparent uh, beginning in 2017 when their stock prices really started to nosedive. And in response to that, they started laying off corporate employees, slashing inventory, and doing everything they could to save money. Seeing that welcome back sign is kind of sad since they're opening just to close and liquidate the stores. That's, that's unfortunate. All of those cost-cutting measures in 2017 didn't seem to have any sort of positive effect, so in January 2018, they announced that they were exploring strategic alternatives for the company, which I'm guessing means putting the company up for sale. Whatever those strategic alternatives were, none of them seemed to have worked out, and that led to the August 2020 bankruptcy filing and closing of all of their stores. Now that we've finished walking through this location, let's go check out another one. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yeah. If you want to do your shopping at a shop for dream come true, the stores at Ham and Dare are waiting here for you. So come on down and see us and have a look around. Experience. Did you catch the Steinmart location in that old strip mall commercial from 1991? I've done videos on this channel in the past covering the fact that strip malls are starting to struggle just as much as traditional malls have been, and that's where Steinmart locations primarily seem to be, is in strip malls. So with all of them closing across the United States, that's just going to cause another set of problems for strip malls. Let's go ahead and move on to looking at our second Steinmart location. Oh look, they've got Jessica Simpson purses. I, I know this is faux leather, but is it tuna or is it chicken? <laughs> 
I saw this USB rechargeable electric razor here, and this kind of looks like the junk you would see out on display during Christmas at like JCPenney and Sears, like those cheap gift types of things. Kind of looks like a piece of junk though. Something I'm sure you noticed in the footage of the first location and also here is that even though a liquidation sale is going on, there are hardly any customers in here. The whole pandemic situation, I think, was the feather that broke the camel's back as far as, you know, how Steinmart was doing and whether or not they were going to survive. And it's certainly not doing them any favors now as far as their liquidation sale goes. Even though it's been apparent for a few years that Steinmart is in trouble and going to have a hard time surviving in the current retail climate, it's still really sad to see them go. This was one of the great American success stories, an immigrant coming over to this country in the early 1900s, starting a store from nothing and then having it grow and flourish and survive for 112 years. That's, that's a pretty big accomplishment. Steinmart's stores seem to be very clean and very well organized. I just think their biggest problem was their failure to adapt to a changing retail landscape. They've shut down online sales on their website since the liquidation started, but even before that, their online sales were very limited. And that's kind of the same story we hear from a lot of failing retailers. I have to admit, I was tempted to buy this cotton candy maker. I may come back in a couple of weeks when the discounts are deeper and see if it's still here. Now this was kind of surprising to see. This location had some Christmas stuff out on clearance. The only thing is, though, they only had it marked down 20%. I, I don't think this is going to move at that discount. This is probably the least busy liquidation sale I've ever been to. It was surprising how much product was still here. I'm used to stuff kind of flying off the shelves pretty quickly. One of the departments where product did seem to be moving was the bedding section. You can see there's some empty shelves back there along the wall. That's where all their bed-in-a-bag type stuff was. But even still, there's a lot of merchandise in this department still left. I don't know if this is due to just strictly the pandemic or people are just waiting for the discounts to become even deeper. This was a really comfortable feeling blanket and something else I was tempted to buy until I looked at the price tag. $150. And I hate when stores do this stuff too, where it's like the regular price was $258, but now it's $149. It's like, no, the price is $149. And something else I got a good chuckle at too is right next to that super expensive blanket was another cheap $13 blanket. This is another one of those things that you would buy like during Christmas as a cheap gift. I am not quite sure how these towels at 10% off are a hot buy. Those look like towels you could buy at Kmart if, if you can find a Kmart still open. As you can see while we continue through the store again though, most of it is still really full of merchandise. The shoes were an area that I was kind of excited to pick through to see if I could find something for a good price. And they had lots of shoes, but of course everything that was my size was gone. That's always my luck. As part of their liquidation plan, Steinmart announced that discounts would be up to 30% on items. And in that first location we looked at, I'm sure you noticed all of the signs said 10 to 30% off. Well. Just a week later, in this location, the signs are saying 10 to 40% off, so obviously they're not liquidating as quickly as they would like. I got a good laugh at this thing. I know it's a drink dispenser, but I just want to buy it and fill it full of soap and have a giant silly soap dispenser in my bathroom. I'll be interested to see what these stores look like in a few weeks and see if a lot of the merchandise has moved or if they're having to make the discounts even deeper. It's been my experience that discounts become bigger and bigger as liquidations go on, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happens. I think the saddest part of this whole situation is that there are 11,000 people that Steinmart employs that are going to lose their jobs, and while that's not as many people as other department stores employ, it's still 11,000 people who are going to be put out of work at a time when it's very hard to find a job. What are your thoughts on Steinmart, though? Is this a store that you shopped at regularly? And do you think there was anything they could have done to save themselves? Or do you think this ending for a 112-year-old company was inevitable? I'd love to know down in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my video on Steinmart. 
If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.